Hello, fourth graders. Welcome to lesson 6.4, Common Denominators. I cannot stress to you how important it is to keep your vocabulary words straight. We've used common factors, common multiples. Now we're looking at common denominators. Um, and we're working with fractions. So remember what the word denominator means. And I hope you understand what common means. Okay, let's move on. All right, we have a word problem here. Martin has two cakes that are the same size. One cake is cut into half size pieces. The other cake is cut into one-third size pieces. He wants to cut the cakes so that they ha have the same size pieces. How can he cut each cake? All right, so let's see here. Martin has two cakes. That's important. One is cut into half-size pieces. The other cake is cut into one-third size pieces. Well, let's think about what denominators mean. If we have one cake, I'm going to draw a cake, and this cake is cut into half size pieces, that means there's two parts. One half and one half makes two halves. Those are half size pieces of that cake. And then we have another same size cake. Forgive me if my lines aren't perfect. Ugh, I don't like that. Let's try. I'm trying to make it the same size. It's, it's important. That's why I use rectangles. It's a little easier to work with rectangles. That still doesn't look good to me. Cut the Maybe there. Measuring tools help. All right. I think that's as good as I'm going to get here. And this time, these are cut into third size pieces. Eh, try those over again. Third size pieces. And when we're talking about thirds, that means three equal parts, each one of them being one third. <clears throat> okay, he wants to cut the cakes so that they have the same size pieces. How can he cut each cake? Well, we're working with thirds. Well, wait. <clears throat> we're working with halves, and we're working with thirds. Halves and thirds. Right? So, what we're looking at is the denominator. Halves, thirds. We need to find a common denominator, and a common denominator is a common multiple. So if I look at 2 and I look at 3, I want to know what denominator is a common multiple of the denominator's two parts and the denominator's three parts. So we just list out, oops, change my color here. I'm going to list out Common multiples. Remember, multiples are not factors. A lot of people get those mixed up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'll stop there. Multiples are infinite. They go on and on forever. So these are multiples of 2. And here I have multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I'm going to stop there. 
Okay, well, let's take a look here. 6 and 6 are common multiples of 2 and 3. 12 is also a common multiple of 2 and 3. I think the easiest way to go would to be cut to would, which would be to cut each cake into sixths, which would be easy to do. Watch here. I'm going to make these thirds here. I'm going to make that half over here. Look. Halves and thirds have sixths in common. We have each cake now cut into sixths. Each piece being one sixth and they're all the same size. So now we have six, which is the common denominator. We could have done twelfths as well. But I wanted to stick with the least common denominator. L, C, D, the least common denominator. Okay, so let's write a definition. A common denominator is a common, oops, multiple that two or more denominators share. Sometimes you'll need to find a common denominator of more than two fractions. There are many reasons why we would want to find common denominators. One reason is to compare fractions. In other words, if I compare four-fifths to one-half, which one's greater, which one's lesser? Now, most of you probably already know that four-fifths is greater than one-half, but if you really wanted to prove it, we could change four-fifths and one half to um, equivalent fractions with the same denominator. In other words, if I looked at four fifths and one half, I want to compare them using the same denominators. And fractions are so much easier to compare when they share the same denominators. So what I'm going to do is change four-fifths and one-half to equivalent fractions that share the same common denominator. So what I'm looking at, of course, is the denominator fifths and the denominator halves. What's their least common multiple would be their least common denominator. Five and two. So here's two. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Oh, I think I found it already. 5. Here are the multiples of 5, 10. Bingo, we found it. Here it is. 10. Oh, yellow is not the best color for that. 10 and 10 are common multiples.
otherwise known as common denominators when you're working with fractions. So, I am going to change halves to tenths. Well, what is equivalent? Two times five is ten. One times five is five. One half is equal to five tenths. Now I'm going to change four fifths to tenths. Five times two is ten. Therefore, four times two is eight. Four fifths is equivalent to eight tenths. One half is equivalent to five tenths. So, if I'm going to compare four fifths to one half, I can look at eight tenths and five tenths, and eight tenths is certainly greater than five tenths, so four fifths is greater than one half. Let's try another one. How about one half? Oh, let's do this one. Three fourths and five eighths. Both are greater than half, but which one's greater? Well, what we'll do is change these fractions to equivalent fractions that share the same denominator. And if I look at fourths and eighths, I know right away that eighths are the least common multiple. But let's prove it because you need work with this. So over here, I'm going to write multiples of four. Four, and remember what multiples are. They're the products of that number multiplied by other numbers. Four, eight, twelve, 16, etc. They go on and on forever. Here are the multiples of 8. Oh, 8 is the first one. I already see the least common multiple or the least common denominator. There's another common denominator, but it's kind of nice working with the least one. So I'm not going to continue with eighths. Right away, I know they both share eighths. So I'm going to change, well, change three-fourths to eighths. I multiply by two. Double that denominator. Make those pieces smaller. That's eight pieces. Well, three out of four would be six out of eight. Times two. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And we don't need to change 5 eighths. It stays the same. 8 times 1, 5 times 1. Okay, so if I'm comparing 3 fourths and 5 eighths, 3 fourths is equivalent to 6 eighths. And 5 eighths is just 5 eighths. Obviously, 6 eighths. Eighths is greater than five eighths. Therefore, three fourths is greater than five eighths. So, this is one way to help us compare fractions. We can also add and subtract fractions with like denom unlike denominators by changing them to like denominators using this method of finding common denominators. Boy, oh boy, does vocabulary count. Okay, we're going to take another visual look at common denominators. Here we have um, a cake that has been cut into thirds. The shaded piece is one-third. And then next to it is the same size cake cut into twelfths. 
and that shaded piece is one twelfth of the cake. All right, so what I want to know is how many twelfths is one third equal to? I know that 12 is a common multiple of 3. So I want to change thirds to twelfths. And I know that 3, I'm going to change my color here, times 4 is 12. And in order to make an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply by 4, which means 1 third is equal to 1 times 4, 4 twelfths. And if I made each piece, I took each third and I cut it into 4 equal pieces. I'm going to show you that with purple here. Here's the third. I'm cutting it into four equal pieces. If I extend this line all the way through the cake, I've got 12 equal parts. And therefore, that one third that was shaded is equal to four twelfths. They both have common denominators now. One third is four twelfths, and one twelfth is one twelfth. So now they have common denominators. All right. I'm going to give you some work to do now. Okay, so you are going to write the pair of fractions as a pair of fractions with a common denominator. In other words, you are going to change these fractions so that they both have the same denominator. In some cases, you'll only need to change one of the fractions. Um, but you need to make equivalent fractions, so that's like the work that we did before. One half and one fourth. What is a common multiple that two and four share? If you need to, you're going to need to change either one or both fractions to an equivalent fraction so that they share the same denominator. Do the same for one third and one fourth, and four twelfths and five eighths. For this next problem, you're comparing one third and four twelfths. You're either going to write equal or not equal. This is your, your options are either equal or not equal. But what I want you to do is create a fraction equivalent to one thirds, one third that shares the common denominator of 12. So in other words, you're changing one third to twelfths. It needs to be equal to twelfths. So then you can compare. All right, that's what you need to do. And when you do this in class tomorrow without my supervision, make sure you show all of your work when changing. Even if you know in your head when you're comparing these fractions, I want you to change them to have common denominators. All right. Good luck. See you later.